Welcome to the Nevis Newscast for Monday, July 13th, 2020. I'm Freddie C. Libert. Principal Education Officer PEO in the Department of Education, Zanella Cluxton, says the Caribbean Examinations Council CXC, the Caribbean Advanced Proficiency Examinations CAPE, and the Caribbean Certificate of Secondary Level Competence CCSLC examinations was expected to begin on Monday, July 13th, 2020. She then went on to list the schedule for the examinations. The CXC CSEC examinations will run from the 13th of July to the 4th of August. The CAPE examinations will run from the 13th of July to the 31st of July. And the CCSLC examinations will run from the 5th to the 7th of August 2020. Private candidates will be sitting their exams at the Charlestown Secondary School. Students of the Charlestown Secondary School will also be sitting their exams at the Charlestown Secondary School. Students of the Gingerland Secondary School and the Nevis International Secondary School will be sitting their exams at the Gingerland Secondary School. PEO Claxton noted that in light of the COVID-19 pandemic, a number of health and safety protocols have been put in place for the examinations. We have increased measures to ensure the safety of all those persons involved. These include but are not limited to temperature checks, health screenings, and hand sanitization upon entry at, prior to entry uh, at each center. Additionally, we have increased the number of testing rooms. We have increased the number of invigilators so that we can adhere to the distancing protocols of six feet on each side um, distance between the students writing the examinations. We have also put in place measures for sanitization and cleaning of each space between examination periods. Candidates are expected to wear their masks and the invigilators are expected to do the same. All candidates are reminded that they should report to the site 45 minutes prior to the beginning of the examinations. Public primary schools on the island will host their graduation ceremonies this week, commencing today, July 13, 2020. Principal Education Officer Zanella Claxton noted that permission was sought from the COVID-19 Task Force and the Commissioner of Police for provisional allowance to host the ceremonies at the Nevis Performing Arts Center, beginning today with the Maud Cross Preparatory School. On Monday, 13th July, the students at the Maud Cross Preparatory School will be celebrating their ceremony at 3 p.m. at NEPAC. On Tuesday, 14th July, at 10 a.m., the students at the St. Thomas's Primary School will be celebrated. And at 4 p.m., the students at the Ivor Walters Primary School will be celebrated. On Wednesday, 15th July, at 10 a.m., the students at the Joyce Lynn Library Primary School will be celebrated. And at 4 p.m., we will celebrate the students at the Charlestown Primary School. On Friday, 17th July at 9.30 a.m., we will celebrate the students at the VOJN Primary School. And at 4 p.m., we will celebrate the students at the Elizabeth Pemberton Primary School. P.E.O. Claxton outlined the details of the graduation ceremonies. All ceremonies will take place at the Nevis Performing Arts Center, and this allows us to be able to stream the ceremonies in a central space so that the individuals, the family members and supporters, community members who are unable to attend due to the COVID-19 protocols can still celebrate real time with our students. The ceremonies will last one hour and two family members will be allowed to attend for each student who is graduating. Temperature checks will be taken at the door prior to entry and we will also have the various sanitization protocols taking place as well. The Nevis Performing Arts Center will be sanitized between ceremonies to ensure the safety of all students. She then expressed congratulations to the class of 2020 of each public and private primary school. We want to say thank you to all stakeholders who have ensured that this ceremony process is possible. We also want to say thank you to the principals, teachers, and parents of the graduating classes 
of 2020 for your investment in your students. They could not have done it without you. Graduating classes of 2020, congratulations. We know that you had many plans for the end of your grade six year, and more specifically for your graduation day. Many things have changed, but know that we are proud of you. 2020 and the COVID-19 pandemic has taught you perseverance resilience, and that the reality in life is that things change sometimes, and we have to adjust. Principal Education Officer Zanola Claxton. Keith Glasgow, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Social Development, has reiterated the need to do whatever we can in order to minimize the negative impact of disasters. Glasgow was at the time addressing the closing ceremony for a disaster readiness training workshop for children and parents hosted by the Department of Social Services, Family Services Division. Well, I want to use this opportunity to commend social services department, the, the family services division, for basically coming up with this initiative. And I also want to commend UNICEF for providing the sponsorship. Because look, if we can train people to respond appropriately to disaster, it means then we would mitigate against the disastrous consequences that we would have. And you would know that, that the, the, the Caribbean region is extremely vulnerable to natural disasters in particular. The workshop covered preparing and responding to hurricanes, earthquakes, and psychotrauma events, social media life as a hazard, and administering cardiopulmonary resuscitation, CPR. Sometimes we cannot um, quantify the, the impact that would have on the different families from which these children come. But what we do know is that the impact can be great in terms of avoiding certain dangers, in terms of avoiding certain losses. And so this, to me, is something that could be a sustainable program, you know, in terms of looking at our environment. And so, again, I want to commend um, social services, and I would wish for this program to be continued in the foreseeable future. Some 35 children from 25 families benefited from the training and were presented with disaster preparedness kits as well as first aid kits. Still to come. By the time the utilities are paid and the other underlying matters that have to be paid, the $500 does not sustain such. The details right after this break. My name is Kervin Wallace. I'm a track and field coach and the PE teacher at the George Level Primary School, encouraging you to stay safe, protect yourself from others, wash your hands often with clean running water and soap. Stay updated by following the Health Promotion Unit on Facebook and Instagram or contact us at 469-8010. Welcome back. The government of St. Kitts and Nevis continues to subsidize the cost of the 14-day mandatory quarantine for nationals and residents returning to the Federation at this time. Currently, any national or resident approved to return to St. Kitts and Nevis must pay a fee of $500 US to assist with the enormous cost of quarantine, a measure designed to contain any imported cases of the novel coronavirus. Abdia Samuel, chair of the National COVID-19 Task Force, says the sum is just a fraction of what is required to operate the government-designated quarantine facility at the Ocean Terrace Inn, OTI. The OTI is, not, is a government-designated facility. It does not belong to the government. And again, we keep thanking them for coming on board for us to be able to use it as a control means to contain anyone. And we have seen the successes of doing so. Uh, you see that we had uh, one of the cases that came was uh, repatriated 
quarantined, identified, detected, identified, and they were contained, managed. And this is what we want to do. We want to maintain the status of St. Kitts and Nevis, and we have made significant sacrifice to ensure, and we are going to continue to make those significant sacrifices. So we are asking the general public to continue to support. Samuel says the cost sharing is necessary to facilitate this public safety undertaking. Now the facilities are owned by TDC. We have to pay, according to the contract, 500 US dollars per room, per room. That has nothing to do with the payment of the utilities, such as electricity, water, cable, internet. And we still have our security forces who are at, the, who are at that facility providing uh, security so that individuals would not leave the facility and go into the society and just integrate and then spread any potential virus. By the time the utilities are paid and the other underlying matters that have to be paid, the $500 does not sustain such. Meantime, Minister of Health, the Honorable Akila Byron Nisbet, says the government is considering ways to provide additional assistance to persons who are not able to pay the $500 US dollar cost of quarantine. A tiered system which decreases the cost for the most vulnerable is being reviewed. Nevis Electricity Company Limited, Nevlek, is advising its customers of scheduled power outages for July 14th and 16th, 2020. Nevlek wishes to advise its customers that there will be an outage on Tuesday, July 14th from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Customers in Hamilton extending from Hamilton Estate, but not including Hamilton Estate, to Sugar Mill Grove will be affected. The interruption is to energize the underground service of the housing development above Hamilton Estate. Navlek also wishes to advise its customers that there will be an outage on Thursday, July 16th from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Customers on the Cotton Ground feeder from Four Seasons Resort to Cotton Ground Police Station will be affected. The interruption is to facilitate the upgrade of the cutting ground feeder from Four Seasons Resort to Dayton Gas Station. Nevlek wishes to apologize to its customers for the short notice and any inconvenience caused due to these interruptions. That's it for this edition of the Nevis Newscast. On behalf of all of us here at the Department of Information, I'm Freddie Stilibert. Thank you for viewing.